everybody, and welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted on this episode to be talking with comics creator Keith Cross. Uh, I came across Keith's work a few years ago. It was Day Black was the comic, and I think I found it through NetGalley. I think it was out on NetGalley, and I also know you're you're a tattoo artist as well. Um, or- Retired retired tattoo artist and so we'll talk about a little bit of that and uh some of your path to creating but but thank you for jumping on and talking with me for a few minutes absolutely thank you for having me man i appreciate it yeah my pleasure my pleasure absolutely i I enjoy your work i enjoy the style that you bring um day black was uh, a really beautiful book and i love the supernatural aspects of it i used to live in tennessee not too far from Georgia and not too far from Atlanta and areas like that. So I uh, also enjoy kind of some of those connections to the book as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, so curious about what, what in your view, and again, you've been an artist in a variety of spaces. Uh, what makes comics this unique space for creating? Man. Um, <clears throat> Well, for me personally, um, I'm really a visual person. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, unlike reading a novel where you're pretty much free to kind of form your own, you know, um, I guess, interpretation of what the author is trying to say. When you get a comic book or when you get any kind of uh, sequential art, you're kind of seeing it through the eyes of other people, um, which in turn, like for me, um, I'm very particular as far as comics with the type of comics that I read like Mm -hmm. the art has to be something that speaks to me first um I'm very strong with or I'm very uh into visual storytelling I like to be able to kind of tell a story without necessarily even reading the words and just kind of be able to kind of just look and see what's going on like taking a lot of visual clues uh visual cues and that's something that uh when I'm creating I like to try to do I like to try to tell the story without words. And a lot of times um, when I am creating uh, Day Black in particular, a lot of times it starts out with art before I write anything down. You know, I'll come up with ideas and I'll write to those drawings. Like I may not even have a concept, but whatever that drawing ends up being, I'll look at it and it'll kind of tell me what the story is going to be. So a lot of times um, the book is created that way. Sometimes it's from writing Most of the time, it's just for me creating and just coming with a concept or idea. And then that just kind of springboards it off into the story. So, yeah, that's the biggest difference for me. Um, I I, I much rather and it's even with uh, I think it's the same with music, because sometimes I may hear a song and it may not really do do anything for me. But sometimes they'll have a video or visual to go with it that Mm -hmm. could just change the entire song and make me love it just from what i saw visually you know so yeah yeah i love that love that and um the, i think you're the first person i've talked to that's talked about having sort of the images first and then the story kind of comes along so a very cool process any yeah, I, um oh i'm sorry go ahead oh okay i was gonna say because um you know initially you know i never really considered myself to be a writer it was something that um i kind of had to do because you know, I've always I've always known I was a visual artist my whole life and I was I like to write and I like to, you know, I like to write short stories and just I have really I think I think I have really uh cool ideas, but I never really considered myself to be a writer. But when I finally decided that I wanted to make Day Black, I went through two or three different writers and nobody really could tell the story like I could. So I really just like, all right, well, if this is going to get done, I have to do it because nothing they're saying. These are great writers to me. Everything else that I read from them, I love, but that doesn't necessarily mean that what I have, they're going to be able to do justice. So uh-huh. it made me just really do it on my own. So, you know, that, you know, just, but it all starts with the art, you know, it all starts with the art. That's just my process. So, yeah. yeah. Um, any particular influences that you would mention that you draw upon? Man, yes. Um, <laughs> my biggest influence story wise storytelling wise and art wise would be wendy and richard peeney oh yeah from yeah. uh elf quest um i started that book when i was a kid and 
you know, my mom bought me that book, and I think she was just like, oh, it's Elf Quest. It's just, you know, some elves. You know, what, how, you know, how bad could it be? Not that it was bad, but, you know, if you've read it, you know, it's definitely it has some adult moments, but it just blew me away. Um, the art, um, the storytelling, the it, it, just everything about it, you know, and, and I actually met them one time and I really, I stood in line to see them. And I was like, when I finally got up to talk to them, like I just broke down in tears. Like I just didn't know how they would affect me. Like, I just didn't know, you know, I just didn't know how somebody so influential could really just have a physical effect on me like that. Like it was like, I'm, I'm not going to say it's probably what people feel like when they, you know, uh, get baptized or feel like they had an out of body experience or, but it was just something that I had no control over. So, and, and in that moment, I realized just how important they were to me, um, you know, as an artist, but, um, they're definitely the top, but, um, aside from that, it would be, um, Ralph Bakshi, um, Robert Crumb, Harvey P. Carr, um, a lot of the uh, 70s underground artists and uh, comics were wildly influenced, um, influential in uh, my style and my um, and my basically my outlook. Um, Mike Mignola. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. He was a huge influence. Um, even Matt Groening from The Simpsons mm -hmm. um, was a big influence just as far as how his his characters or how The Simpsons were so simple but it, it was deceptively simple because you know they would just do these complex movements and i was just amazed like they, they got these big chunky hands but they would just do <laughs> things the animation was just so top tier and it just showed me that you could express a lot without necessarily being so so detailed and meticulous uh -huh. so um those are some of the ones i have many but those are like my core ones you know that's cool yeah yeah um what draws you to tell a particular kind of story you were talking about that process of trying to get to the story through kind of other writers but but what about the story kind of draws you wow i really like um i really like stories that are rooted in reality or rooted in the reality of whatever world they're in like Oh man, it's, it's hard to describe. I, I definitely like things that are left field, out of the box. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. A lot of my, um, you know, I wanted to be a filmmaker. So a lot of my influence, I'm more influenced by film than I am from comics or actual art. And even when I'm drawing, I kind of, um, I kind of draw my things in a, in the mind frame of, you know, a camera setting it up or just, uh -huh. just from the viewpoint. So a lot of my uh, a lot of inf a lot of filmmakers that influenced me were like um Jim Jarmusch, Gus Van Sant, um <laughs> Tarantino, um Spike Lee. So I really like um I really like stories that are well well, no, well number one, um I really and, and recently um I'm really attracted of course st to stories that feature people of color. Because there's just been such a long period where it wasn't the case. And I guess, and for me, it feels like it was only noticeable to me as of late because, you know, you don't really miss what you don't really have. So right. once you start getting it, like, say, for instance, like Lovecraft Country, you know, Watchmen, Atlanta, like these were shows that really let me know that there was a space for Day Black, for a story like Day Black, uh -huh. you know, um, I'm really I'm, I'm really attracted to stories with people of color, but not the typical stories, um, because I feel like there's still a, um, assumption or just a, um, of what you know of what we like and what we like to watch, and mm -hmm. you know, um, <clears throat> so I like anything that kind of puts that expectation on its head, and I like being a, a person that is adding to that because I feel like Day Black is in the same space because it's a very black book, but it's not. I don't think it's alienating to anyone else that isn't black. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's not something that I really did intentional. That's just who I am as a person. You know, I think um, I'm able to, um, I don't know. I, you know, I went to an all white art school, you know? Yeah. Um, so I've been around a diverse group of people all my life. So my creative output, I think draws all of those influences from the people that I've met their experiences and it just kind of informs my worldview so when i'm writing 
you know, I'm not, I'm kind of writing with the intention to, yeah, yeah, I'm writing with the intention for everybody, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I could, I could go on, you know, I don't want to keep rambling. No, no, you're good. You're good. I, I was okay. just thinking, uh, I'm a huge fan of the fact that right now, uh, more so in recent years and, and may it continue, there's been a wider range of experiences that folks have been able to find in comics and all kinds of literature. Uh, so I, I'm a person who appreciates that. And as a classroom teacher, I like putting those books on my shelf too, um, so that students can connect and, you know, see something different, see something new, see something that kind of reflects them or, or teaches them too. So much appreciation for that. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I mean, for me, it's just like, um, I love learning about other people and other cultures. Like, um, even with uh, the show Reservation Dogs, like mm -hmm. I, I wasn't aware, you know what I'm saying? I, I just wasn't aware and it felt great to, even though, you know, I'm not gonna, you, you can't really just condense a whole culture into a TV show, but it's a start, you know what I'm saying? It's a start mm -hmm. and it's a jumping point to some, to, to other things. So I just love learning about other cultures and other people. It, it, it's great. So yeah, I, I just love that. I love that, you know? Um, and even when I'm writing, I try to write for other cultures, like in upcoming issues of Day Black, I have characters that are, um, I have I have characters that are gay. I have characters that are trans. I have a, a Native American. So I have these characters, but I'm approaching it really uh, carefully just because I want to make sure. And, you know, we live in a time where, you know, everything you do is put under such scrutiny, even if you have good intentions, you know, it's like you really have to you really have to do your due diligence before you really put stuff out. But at the same time, I never want to castrate my creative process. You know, I never want to castrate my um, outlook on things. You know, um, I think it's just about being respectful of the people that you're trying to, um, I guess, represent in your story, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And for yeah. like uh, with my current book, Day Black uh, Reparations. I'm writing from the viewpoint of a woman for the first time. And, you know, I had conversations with my wife. I had conversations with women that had been raped, that had gone through abuse because that it deals with stuff like that in the book. And, um, you know, I just handled it with such care, you know, just because, you know, but I was afraid. I wasn't afraid to do it, but I just respect it. I just felt the I felt the weight of what I was doing. So I just wanted to make sure I handled it right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to circle back to that in just a minute to talk about the the work that's coming and the creative visions uh, moving forward. I also wanted to ask about uh, particular positive experiences, folks along the way in the in the comics community, publishing or artistic community that you would kind of point to and say, um, you know, kind of a guidepost along the way, so to speak. Yeah, um, man. Um... Well, personally, uh, Newton Lillivoy, Lillivoy mm -hmm. from Crescent City Monsters was um, a big, a big, um, he had a big hand in my return to comics because I had been, um, I took a hiatus, like I, I hadn't put a book out since about 2017, 2018, when I was with uh, Rosarium. So the book, when you saw Day Black on Goodreads, that was when I was with uh, a publishing company that I'm not with anymore. Mm -hmm. So when I parted ways with them, um, you know, I was just kind of in limbo. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. Um, my publisher dropped me, me and him, I guess, weren't seeing eye to eye on some things. And, you know, it kind of messed with my confidence for a little while. And um, mm -hmm. so Newton was a guy who at the time, or not at the time, even now, Crescent City Monsters is just like one of the hottest indie comic books out right now. And he just reached out to me and wanted to do a crossover with me, which just kind of just floored me because I just really thought it was out of sight, out of mind. You know, when you're an um, independent creator and you're not consistently putting stuff out, like I feel like people just tend to forget about you. And that's where I felt I was. But he showed me that I wasn't. So um, when he did that, um, it definitely put a battery in my back. So shout out to Newton and also um, Greg Anderson, Elise who does uh, It's Not of the Wear Spider. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's always been really uh, supportive. He was one of the first people that interviewed me uh, when I came out. And, and you know, um, it's kind of like, and, and it's similar to the character Merce in Day Black. He, 
I've kind of always felt like an outlier in the um, in the indie comic in the black indie comics community specifically because um, everybody is kind of like superhero y or like kind of capes. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like I wasn't um, included in certain collaborations or certain just like events. Like I like I remember even even recently um, when I was trying to promote. Uh, the comic or the the, the the Kickstarter, there was a group that was, was a black comics group. They have all black comic book stuff, but they would they wouldn't let me post anything promoting my Kickstarter because it wasn't a superhero villain type comic book. And I was like, what yeah. the hell? Like, that's yeah. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like we're an indie we're an indie community. Like I I, I just think that's wild. Yeah, but um, yeah. Greg and Newton have always just been like, and 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 another thing is great because we all we both we all three of us have like supernatural type comic books they aren't mm -hmm. the typical comic books either so i think that's where um we all tend to kind of uh, jail and we've all crossed over like i've done a crossover with greg and i've done it with newton so yeah those are the top two for me man um and yeah those two guys but as far as just in general i think i named the other influences but those are the the, the, the most immediate people that i know that i would name cool cool very cool yeah um i became acquainted with the Wear spider just this past year and and was okay. checking it out and been looking at it so great to hear that that name and shout out as well cool. um so now circling back to um the newest work that you have out reparations curious about those creative steps moving forward um you mentioned kickstarters being a space curious about the places where people can go to sort of follow along support check out the work because uh i'll say I, I really again appreciate what you do i appreciate the the style that you bring and it's really cool reading really cool reading experience thank you thank you well mm -hmm. um you can get uh of course day black comic is the website where you could follow uh and get the back issues and the upcoming issues the Kickstarter was just funded a few days ago. Hallelujah. That's done. And I'm so happy. And mm -hmm. I'll finally have that book out. I'm hoping, you know, mid to late December. And, but until then you could also go to Kickstarter and look that title up and then I'll have a page where I'll be doing updates and just kind of showing the progress as far as me getting the rewards together and shipping out to people. And also um, to anybody that wants to see the day black short film, you know, we shot a live action short film that's on the website. So you go to dayblackcomic.com and you can see that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, anything that we've missed in the talk through that you want to make sure to mention? Man, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. Yeah. 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 Uh, definitely hope folks out there will check out your work and uh, also appreciating. I'll just say before we close out, the art you've got going on in the background here is also some very cool vibes that are happening right now as well. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> Thank you. This, yep. is my, this is my work studio slash man cave. Yeah. Nice. 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 Uh, well, Keith, thanks so much for jumping on and glad to talk anytime about projects that you have coming up and uh, yeah, glad to share about your work. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jason. My pleasure.